Good afternoon. Last week, our nation was shocked and saddened once again by the news of a mass shooting. We've barely recovered from hearing about the shooting in the Buffalo, New York grocery store, and now we learn that at a school in Uvalde, Texas, 21 people were killed, including 19 children. I try to imagine what this would be like if it happened in our town, and what I felt was overwhelming shock and grief. A friend of mine told me that his cousin was a librarian at this school. Fortunately for her, she was in a different building at the time of the shooting, but she has asked that we pray for the principal and the vice principal of this elementary school. Their first names are Marcy and Shauna. As they grieve, the rest of our country is debating once again about what we could do to prevent such things. Now, I can't imagine that the people of Uvalde have space in their hearts right now to consider bigger questions like this. But for the rest of us, we're asking, is there something that could prevent these tragedies from happening or making this less likely? And the conversation, and conversation is a polite word, the conversation inevitably turns to the question of gun control. Should we regulate and restrict the right to bear arms that is guaranteed in the Second Amendment? Now, I'm not going to touch that topic with a 10-foot pole, at least not here in this devotion. It raises such strong emotions for everyone, no matter where they stand on the issue. And it is those emotions that I want to talk about, not the topic itself. Think about how important gun ownership is. Think about how significant the Second Amendment is for so many people. It's not unusual to see people wearing t-shirts or hats or having bumper stickers that say something like, God, guns, and country, or faith, family, and firearms. The message is clear. The right to bear arms is one of the very top values of their lives. And this leads me to wonder, why? Why does the freedom to own a gun rank so high in someone's life, right up there with God and family and country? After all, there are many other freedoms that are enshrined in the Constitution. We don't see slogans for them. There is something about having guns and having the right to have a gun that touches people deeply. There's an entire culture built around it. Perhaps it's because they believe that this freedom is under attack and we might lose it. So if, for example, the freedom of speech was in danger of being restricted or lost, we would probably see t-shirts defending it. Maybe. But I think there's more to it than that. It could be not just guns, but what firearms represent and what we can do with them that makes them so important for us. Yes, we use guns to hunt, of course, but perhaps more importantly, we also use them for self-protection. Having a gun gives you the ability to defend yourself if you or those you care about are in danger. After all, one of our most basic instincts is self-preservation. And guns are a great resource that we can use to fulfill this instinctual need that we have. A gun gives you a sense of power. There's something about holding a gun that makes you feel bigger. Even if you never use your gun, whether defensively or hopefully not to attack or threaten someone else, just knowing that you have it Knowing that you know how to use it means that you will not be helpless in a time of crisis. And this is a sense that I think most people who advocate gun regulation just don't understand. The Second Amendment gives us something that we can rely on when we need to. And that could be why it is so important. There is a danger, however, that perhaps some people have fallen into. As Christians, 
and especially in our Presbyterian or Reformed branch of the church family, we recognize how easy it is for us to fall into idolatry. Idolatry is what happens when something take, takes the place in your life that belongs only to God. And when it is there and God is not, then your life is off balance. Now, the sinful human heart can turn just about anything into an idol, even things that are inherently good. But when they become an idol, then they're not good for us. We abuse God's gifts by allowing them to become the center of our lives instead of God himself. Psalm 20 was written long before there were firearms, but the most powerful weapon at that time were war chariots. And so Psalm 20 gives this warning. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. What are you putting your trust, your hope, your confidence in? Is it a gun that gives you that sense of power and protection that you might trust in instead of the name of the Lord our God? Or let's flip it over to people on the other side of the debate. Are you putting your hope in gun control laws? Are you thinking that if these restrictions are enacted, then all of our problems will go away and that they are the answer? Wherever you stand, do not allow God's blessings to dominate your life. Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, above all else, we ask for your mercy and compassion, your healing touch for the people who are suffering from this shooting in Uvalde. But I also ask, Lord, that wherever we stand on the gun control issue, that you would protect us from the sin of idolatry, that we do not allow anything to take the place that belongs to you, that we do not put our trust and our hope and our reliance upon anyone or anything than you alone. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.